take a look at this painting and tell me what exactly do you think is going on here given the condition of the painting and the style it was painted in. I can understand if you can barely see anything other than an old man in the bed, writhing in pain. Let me help your eyes a little. There you go, fixed it. Now things are looking much better. Now you can see that there are four people in this dingy bedroom. Two standing at the side of the bed, one near the old man with an animated pose. This painting is called The Death of Cardinal Beaufort and was painted by the British painter Joshua Reynolds. Sorry, Sir Joshua Reynolds. It was painted between 1786 to 1788 and if you search for paintings by Joshua Reynolds, chances are that you're not gonna find this painting. Why? Because this painting has been somewhat of a black sheep in the family of other paintings by the artist. The reason for that is right in front of your eyes. You can see that there are four people in the painting, right? Well, there's the catch. There are not just four people in it, but actually five. Well, I don't know if you can call the fifth person a person. No matter how much you try to find the fifth person here, you won't be able to. That's because even art historians could not. The fifth subject in the painting was hidden beneath layers of varnish. It was recently discovered when the restoration resulted in the removal of the varnish and behold, the terrifying tiny demon that smiles with malice near the dying man. Now I see why this demon was kept under the varnish. I guess you could say, they used varnish to vanish the demon. But what exactly is happening here? Joshua Reynolds has painted a scene from the play Henry VI. Act 3, scene 3, from part 2 to be exact. There was a time when painters would usually pick scenes from plays by our good old Billy Shakespeare and Joshua Reynolds was one of them. Let me tell you what exactly is happening here. The person who is on his deathbed is Henry Beaufort, the Bishop of Winchester. Throughout the play he is shown to be a negative, jealous and conspiring man. There's another character named Gloucester who really got on Beaufort's nerves. So Beaufort, along with two others, conspire to kill him. I mean, we all can understand, right? If you do not like a person, you might say, Ugh, I wanna kill this man. Well, Beaufort does not just talk, but he walks it. Not in this scene though, the poor guy can barely move. So our Cardinal Beaufort here kills Gloucester. But the jolly bishop is not too jolly when his death arrives. You can see him writhing in pain and completely losing his mind. In this scene, the king, Henry VI, who is standing with his hands up, comes to visit the cardinal, asking him how he feels. Certainly, Henry was not really good at reading people. Do you really need to ask this man how he's feeling? But Beaufort is way out of his wits. He's hallucinating, hearing things and can't even understand who's talking to him. Let me read you the entire scene so that you can get an idea of what's happening. Of course, I'll be reading the simplified version of it. Also, a word of caution, you're gonna have to bear my terrible enactment of this scene. So just, you know, just go through it. How is my lord? Speak to your king, Beaufort. If you were death, oh, I can't do this. If you were death, I'd give you England's treasure, which would be enough to buy another similar island. Just so you let me live without any pain. Beaufort is hallucinating and thinking that it is death who's talking to him. Ah, what does this say about your evil life that death appears so terribly to you? Beaufort, it is your king who is speaking to you. Bring me to your trial when you want. Didn't Gloucester die in his bed? Where else should he die? Can I make men live, whether they want to or not? Oh, don't torture me. I will confess. Is he alive again? Then show me where he is. I'll give you a thousand pounds just to look at him. He doesn't have eyes. The dust have made him blind comb his hairs and look, look, it stands upright, the twigs smeared with bird line that are ready to catch my soul as it takes flight. Give me something to drink and tell the apothecary to bring the strong poison that I bought from him. Oh, you eternal god of heavens, look gently on this poor man. Ah, beat back the interfering devil that attacks this man's soul and wash away his black despair from his heart. See how the pain of death makes him grimace. I don't know why I'm making his voice so, uh, you know, just go through it. Don't disturb him. Let him, ah, uh, come on. Don't disturb him. Let him die peacefully. 
peace to his soul if God wants him to have peace. Lord Cardinal, if you think of heaven's bliss, hold up your hand and give a signal that you hope to be saved. The Cardinal dies. He died without giving a sign. Oh, God forgive him. Such a bad death suggests he led a monstrous life. Oh, don't judge him. We are all sinners. Close his eyes and draw the curtain tightly and let us all reflect and pray. I think we all got a good idea of what happened. Beaufort was overcome with the guilt of killing Gloucester. So much so that he was hallucinating, almost as if he was being actually possessed by a demon. And this is where the hidden element of the painting comes. So from the conversation we saw in the play, one can understand that Shakespeare was using metaphors, as he always does. But Joshua Reynolds took some creative liberty and painted an actual demon, showing guilt as this small monster with fangs and a devilish look. This addition of the demon completely changed the meaning of the scene. Now it was almost as if the demon was making Beaufort see and say things. He was not just hallucinating these things, but was possessed by the demon. The fangs of death were actually inside him, making him grimace in pain. So how did people react to this addition? Not in a nice way. Critics, well, criticized the addition of the demon, claiming that it was unnecessary and it takes the metaphor literally, ruining its effect. We all understand that it was death and the guilt that made Beaufort speak in such way. But seeing an actual demon gives it a supernatural side, taking away the emotional subtleties. Reynolds perhaps anticipated this backlash and that could be the reason why he painted the demon very lightly, like a smoky apparition that is barely visible. It was all the years of varnish that made this already scarcely visible figure vanish. Critics aside, I think the addition of the demon was a great move by Reynolds. Yes, it does not fit in well with the play, but the play is not historically accurate. Shakespeare added many things from his imagination, so did Reynolds. And just like the play uses metaphors, we can also see the demon and consider it as a metaphor. It's all the evil inside the cardinal, finally leaving the body while he is dying. It overpowers him with guilt, shame and pain and smiles as Beaufort dies. The demon makes the painting more interesting, more dynamic, and it makes us think and ask questions. Instead of just depicting a scene from a play, the demon that is scarcely visible to us and not to the subjects in the painting gives it a new dimension in fact, the demon is the reason why I'm making this video and you're watching it. But I want to know your thoughts about the painting. 